episode of Access Ability. I'm your host, Laura. I'm a white woman with bright blue hair, shaved on one side, wearing a plain black dress. Initially released around five years ago, Dead Cells is a side-scrolling roguelike. Basically, you play as a little slime that's inhabited a body and reanimated it, you go off with some randomised weapons, you try and defeat a bunch of bosses, go through a bunch of levels, and if you die, you're sent back to the start with a few permanent upgrades intact, but basically you start again from the beginning and try and get to the end without dying. Released earlier this week, Breaking Barriers is a new accessibility-focused update to Dead Cells which aims to bring the game's tough but eventually beatable level of challenge to a wider variety of players, particularly disabled players. So today, on Access Ability, we're going to be talking about the new Breaking Barriers update for Dead Cells. We're going to go through in detail a bunch of the different accessibility settings that have been added to the game. We're going to talk about where you can find some of them because they're not all in the new accessibility settings menu. And we're going to talk about how some of these settings work together to make sure that this game can remain difficult but completable for a wider range of players. When you first boot up Dead Cells, post update, if you go into the options menu, you'll see that the game's new accessibility options are generally split into two separate menus accessibility settings, and assist mode. There's a few that aren't in those menus and we'll get to those in a minute. Starting with the accessibility settings menu, let's quickly rattle through some of the many new settings added to the game. For players who may struggle when presented with full screen flashing or shaking effects, both can be toggled off in the accessibility settings menu. Though the game does warn some explosions and bright effects will remain in cases where they're gameplay critical. For players who either become overwhelmed by too much visual information, or partially sighted blind players who may struggle to pick out visual information in cluttered scenes, players can now limit the number of particles generated by effects such as fire or ice in the game, in 10% increments. In addition, blood effects can be turned off entirely, removing another source of potential visual clutter from gameplay. The new background filter option allows players to change the colour and saturation of the background in levels, making it easier to see at a glance what is a background element, which can be safely ignored, and which are foreground elements that are important to gameplay progression, similar to how PlayStation's high contrast mode helps to separate interactable elements out from backgrounds and environments. Another option for players struggling to make out gameplay elements in the moment, the main character, enemies and NPCs can now all have outlines applied around them during gameplay, each of which can be set to a custom colour. The same outline settings options also exist for active skills, projectiles and secrets. When collecting new kinds of skills during Dead Cells runs, the three previously colour coded skill types, Brutality, Tactic and Survival, can now have their colours customised, as well as having icons displayed next to them so they can be differentiated without the need for colour differentiation. Lastly, text sizes in various areas of the game can be individually adjusted. However, while these are the only text altering options in the accessibility menu, they're not the only ones available in the game, as a few accessibility settings are hidden in other menus. In the video menu, players can change between a number of different fonts, including one that's designed to be more approachable to dyslexic players. This same menu also contains options for customising your HUD, including being able to increase its size up to 50% from its default. In the gameplay options menu, you'll find many of the game's new mobility accessibility options. Players can hold down a button to execute multiple attacks rather than needing to mash repeated button presses, they can jump for as long as the jump button is held, they can turn the shield from a button hold into a toggle, and make it possible to chain rolls by holding down the roll button. The game also now allows for input remapping of many major functions. For players who need greater control of their audio mix, Dead Cells sound menu now allows for editing all sound effect volumes separately from each other, with a high degree of control on offer. Before I move over to assist mode, I want to state that while I'm really happy that all of the previously mentioned accessibility features have been added to the game in its latest update, I am somewhat frustrated that a lot of these accessibility features additions do not exist in the accessibility settings menu, and only exist spread out across other disparate menu sections. While I understand it's important, for example, to be able to find granular audio mixing options in the sound menu, it always frustrates me when I see an accessibility menu and can't go straight there to find all of the game's available accessibility options in a single clearly defined location. Several settings, such as the custom font selection for example, 
took me a while to find when working on this video, despite knowing explicitly that they existed and had just been added in this accessibility update. Lastly, let's talk about the new assist mode. One of my biggest concerns in the run-up to the release of this accessibility update for Dead Cells is that early reporting on the update suggested that the game might actively discourage the mode's use. When you activate assist mode, there is a disclaimer that comes up saying part of the fun of Dead Cells is to enjoy the tough but fair experience, Evil Empire's marketing manager Matthew Horton told Twinfinite back in May. However, now the update is live, it's clear that, in practice, the game does not try to discourage the use of assist mode, but in fact leans into trying to reassure the player that it's okay to use. There's perhaps some discouragement from using the settings to try and make the game easy for yourself, suggesting that you should be aiming to make the game a challenge for your ability level, but completable, but it's certainly not the blanket discouragement that I've been bracing for. With assist mode active, players have a few more options available while playing. Players can reveal the entire map of each level right from the start without requiring exploration, set your character to automatically attack nearby enemies with your primary weapon, destroy nearby doors automatically, provide an easier parry window, slow down the activation of enemy traps, reduce trap damage, reduce enemy health and damage, and even give yourself a number of extra lives, up to and including infinite lives. That final feature, the increased number of lives, is perhaps this update's most interesting and controversial feature. Players who die with extra lives available will restart the current level with the exact items and progression they had when they first arrived at the start of that level, rather than having to restart the entire run. The setting is basically intended to provide support to players who either struggle with involuntary motor control movements, or players who may struggle with consistent coordination or sustained focus, allowing them to keep a good run of the game going if an element of their disability outside of their control momentarily impedes their ability to progress. It essentially creates checkpoints at the start of individual levels to reduce the likelihood of a single moment of disability ruining an otherwise promising run. While it's undeniable that this new set of accessibility settings is going to help a bunch of new people be able to play Dead Cells more effectively and have more fun with the game, it is a shame that these settings weren't added into the game until five years after its original release, and it's a shame that some of them aren't neatly placed into the accessibility settings menu to make them easy to find, but when that's the biggest complaints I have about an accessibility update for a game, that accessibility update has probably been done pretty well. And I want to be clear, I really appreciate all of the work that's been put into this accessibility update for Dead Cells. I'm feeling pretty confident it's going to get me back into playing, and this time I might actually see the end of that game.